Which part do you think you did the best on? Jamie? No, some of you did, but not everybody. The part in general, overall, you did the best on was the textbook content. I think that reflects what kind of test you're used to taking in Taiwan. You're used to taking tests on content from the textbook, remembering it, and giving answers back. So in fact, most of you, not all of you, some of you need to work on it. Most of you did quite well on the content part of the test. And I told you a lot of the questions. I said, right? So if you marked it, you probably were well prepared. But in any case, I think in Taiwan in general, probably in East Asia in general, students are used to learning content from a textbook and then giving back answers on the test. So overall, on that part, you did quite well. Some of you got a perfect score in the pinyin. Some of you got a perfect score. Some of you are former students and you did not do very well. So the pinyin part, some of you did extremely poorly. Some, some got 100, some got zero. Some got something in between. For the pinyin, you need to review. If you got a score below 80, pinyin. Go over the tutorial again. Put this in your notes. You don't know your score yet. Do the tutorial again. The tutorial, I think, in my opinion, is very good, very effective. Pinyin is not difficult to learn, but you have to pay attention. You have to spend time on it. The tutorial does it step by step. So if you have a score below 80 on the pinyin, please do the tutorial again and pay attention and remember. Otherwise, it's almost like doing fu hao. But mostly it follows the same structure as doing fu hao. So it should not be difficult for you. And in Dai Yingwen, most of the students learned it extremely well. I'm sure they don't bow. So it's about Shen Zai Gala San Yin, you don't want to see you should it. Alright, so that is uh, the pinyin part. And then the next part is the IPA transcription. Some of you are doing pretty well. Some of you did very well on the first part, very well on the second part, but you're having trouble on the third part. What is the ting? That is a different skill from the course, from, from learning content from a textbook. That's why I separate the scores. So, the, the textbook part, study, that's all. master it. If you pay attention. Because that takes longer. It takes longer to train your ears to get the right sounds. Is that right? Again, everybody can learn it, but it it's a different skill. So, so for parts two and three, those of you who would like some help, we now are offering tutors. Those of you who got 85 or better, tutor. Now, tutor is extra work. Okay. Extra credit. So you是帮同学做tutor的话,然后真的有做,你要回来报告,你们两个要跟我们讲,我们是什么时候,所以你要做tutor的话,两个人都要记,好像记账一样,就是几点到几点几号,然后你帮他什么,几次,这些要记下来
。So, 一定要记那个日期、时间、内容这样子，两个人都要记。Everybody clear on that? 然后呢 ，tutor 的人。可以拿到 extra credit， 多少我不不定，我是要看期末的成绩，你有帮助，你有多少一些额外可以赚 credit extra credit 的东西就给你加分 ，OK？ So the person who gets the tutoring， you don't get 加分 ，but you will get a better score in your work， 那是你的 reward， 因为你需要帮助，对不对？你本来是 the buyer， the tutor is the seller， so the buyer is going to get benefits by better understanding and better grades。Everybody clear what's going on？ 可以吗 ？Any questions? Is there a score、um, between chocolate and K and L? Good question. And that's really the point of this one. Every year we go through this every year. There is no schwa there. I play them several times. There is no schwa. But you learn a schwa in school, right? Is that right? Chocolate is what you learn in school. Yeah. Everybody, read page thirty-two. Do it on your own. Here we have too many things to do in class now. So phonetics one, page thirty-two. It's called schwa elision in English. Schwa elision in English. Elision means 省略 It means that this sound goes directly to another sound, leaving out the sound in the middle. There are many words where we usually leave out the schwa. Not always. We can say family, no problem. There are four people in my family. Usually we say family in American English. British English and American English sometimes agree, sometimes they're different. On this page, you will see the number of syllables for each variety. English, 美式我都有写出来。英式呢，我每一个都问过我的英式老师。I asked him. I checked dictionaries and I asked my teacher. So English is 有人已经已经等于是已经订正订正过。None of it is perfect because this depends on the situation. 这个二要不要省略？有一些字是。We almost always omit the "a."、Uh. So you heard in Peter's and in Bruce's chocolate, neither one has a schwa. But for some words like family, sometimes we do put a schwa in. So please read over this page very carefully. Everybody, write it down. That's an assignment. I will add it on to our syllabus. Page thirty-two, schwa elision. Let me write it down. This one is about Peter Han. Pita Ha is very very famous. Anybody know anything about Pita Ha? The the un sound is because Bolang Hao is a nasal symbol. Write that down. We need this. We're going to be using this a lot in the future. 一个母音或者不一母音，别的音也可以。上面加个波浪号。That means nasalize this sound. So instead of Pita Ha, it's Pita Ha. Right. And the R happens to be a tap. And For Peter Hunt, you need to know one guy's name. He's very, very famous for doing research on Peter Hunt. Did you hear about him in Ugai? His name is Dan Everett. Dan Everett. Look on Facebook, you'll find him. <laughs> Dan Everett. He is extremely productive. He's writing a lot of books now beyond the ones he originally did on Peter Hunt. He lived in Brazil among this. Very remote tribe. There are only a few hundred people left who speak it. They have refused to be swallowed up by Western civilization in South America, in Brazil. So many of them do not speak Brazilian. They sorry Portuguese at all. 他们完全不学葡萄牙语啊，更不学英语了。So Dan Everett went down there originally. This is an interesting story. I'm going to take a little time to tell it. He went down there originally. As a missionary with his wife Karen, and they have, I think, three kids. So they were doing mission work here. In order to do mission work among people who do not speak English and don't speak Portuguese, you have to learn the language. So they did a lot of linguistic work on Pinaha, which hadn't been studied much before. I think someone had looked at it a bit, but they studied it in great depth, and he published a lot on it. Then part of it is a personal story. You're a 传教士 but what happens when you realize you don't believe in God anymore? Yeah, Amy, <laughs> you just kind of laughed. What what was your feeling? So what? Go ahead. Un, unbelievable. <laughs> he he ended up unbelieving. Right. So, can you imagine devoting your life to being a 传教士 
for the Christian church, and then you realize you don't believe in God anymore? Read it online. Go online. There's lots of information on it. It's been extensively reported in the media. It's not the first time it's happened. I've read about it from many, many people who have started out as a, as a, as a minister. He started to be a minister. He started to be a minister. He started to be a minister. That has happened many, many times. It's not unusual at all. He stopped believing in God. His wife did not stop believing in God. So what happened? Yes. He couldn't even talk to his children for many years because the mother felt that he, he had uh, betrayed the church. And so it was, he's, he's now remarried, has a new wife, everything's fine now. But it was quite a crisis. Well, anyway, this all came up because of the word Piraha. When you see Piraha, you will think of Dan Everett. He's written a lot of research on it. And part of the reason it's so famous is because he challenged Chomsky on something Chomsky said was a very basic trait of human language. And that is recursion. Recursion is nesting. That means putting something inside something else. Recursion. So for example, the brother of the girl who I talked to yesterday. Just who I talked to yesterday. It's a recursion. It's a nesting. It's a relationship. He says they don't have those in Piraha. And also, the sister of my friend. Okay. They would say something like, I have a sister, my sister has a friend. I want to see the friend. Recursion. And then it got really hot. Because you know what happens when emotions get involved in an argument. So this has been, if you want to look on the internet, you'll find stuff. And then Chomsky, recursion, so we won't get into it. That's just background. If you're curious, you can look it up. That's sort of going on. And later on, because of a lot of power struggles and things, people said that um, said unkind things about Dan, and he can't go back to Brazil now. Brazil, so but he's very productive. He's writing other books as well. OK? So just a little bit of linguistics, common sense, plus bagua <laughs> ichi. And bagua is usually something that really, really attracts us. So if you want to see some, you'll get a lot in this particular case. OK? We're going to learn a new word, xian jiao yi ge. Ta hui jiang liang ge category bing zai ichi. Because sometimes it's handy. They're called obstruents. Zu in. Obstruents, voiceless obstruents. Obstruents include stops and fricatives. Zu jiangzen. Stops and fricatives are obstruents. We're not going to finish, so I think, I think we need another day. We will finish on Wednesday. We'll have the test next Monday. Uh, in the meantime, though, start previewing chapter three, because we really need to get started if we're going to finish the first five chapters in the first semester. So for Wednesday, I want you to read the page on theremin, on the theremin. You're already reading page 32, which is about schwa elision, right? So go over that page carefully, because there's a lot of things that are taught differently in Taiwan from the way native speakers say them. So page 32, schwa elision. In addition, I want you to look at uh, page 18 about the virtual theremin, because we're going to be talking, we have been talking about frequency and amplitude. Is that right? So there's a musical instrument. If you weren't on NTU phonetics last night, a lot of you were up kind of late and still talking, you know, chatting on, on NTU phonetics on Facebook. There's an instrument called the theremin, named after a Russian guy who invented it. And you play it without touching it. Have you ever seen an instrument that you can play without touching it? Well, this one has two antennae, or two antennas. One changes the frequency, and the horizontal one changes the amplitude. So if you put your hand here, and you get closer and closer, it'll go And if you put your hand down when you're at it'll go It gets louder and louder. So you can play music just by waving your hands in the air. 
And the reason I made a page about this is so that you would become better acquainted with the notions of frequency and amplitude and how we can separate the two and put them together. And there is a very fun piece of software. It's a virtual ther theremin. You download it, put it on your computer. It's safe, no virus, don't worry, I've tried it. You download it to your computer and then you can play a theremin on your desktop. Okay, so everybody play around with a virtual theremin. It's a lot of fun. It will help you become more acquainted with the ideas of frequency and amplitude and how you can combine them. So those two pages, page 18 and also page 32. Be ready to perform the performance exercises next time. They are not that difficult, but it's good to prepare. All right, and that's it. If you have questions, let me know. We'll see you Wednesday.